I greet all of you as you're watching me. I greet you all in Jesus' mighty name. The message I want to share this afternoon is, is it a sin for a woman to preach in the church? Of course, for many of you who have listened to that message, I shared it late 2020. For those of you who haven't listened to it, in that message that I share, titled, Is it a sin for a woman to preach in the church? It was a revelation that God showed to me. And in that revelation, the Lord gave me two scriptures. One of it was taken from the book of Matthew 28, verse number 1 to 9. The Lord also gave me another scripture I was taking from the book of John, chapter 4, verse number 29 and verse 89. Those two scriptures were the scriptures the Lord Jesus revealed to me in the first revelation. He showed to me concerning women, allowing them to preach. But in that revelation, for those of you who do not understand, because after I shared this message, I, I had a lot of comments. People caused to say a lot of things that women are not supposed to preach. Women are supposed to keep silent. Yes, it is true. In the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verse number 34, the Bible says that women should learn in silence in the church. Women are not allowed to speak in the church. And in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse number 15, the Bible says the same thing that I suffer not a woman to teach or to speak, nor usurp authority over a man. This scripture has already said it all, that women should not preach. But in the other way around, as I shared in that revelation, for those of you who haven't listened to it, I would like you to go back to my channel. I shared it towards 2020. That's about two years now. If you listen to that testimony, I did not say, God told me that I should tell women to be a pastor, to be a deacon like they are being now, to be a reverend, to be a bishop, or to lead or even start a church. I did not say that. What I say was that God told me that he called women in a special way. You have seen the case of Mary Magdalene. As the Lord was risen from the dead, he would have allowed a man, either Peter, either James, they would have been the first people, come to the tomb and discover that truly our Savior, our God, is risen from the dead. They would have taken the message to the city. But it wasn't like that. Do we think that God did not know what he was doing? That he allowed Mary, Magdalene, and the rest of the Mary to be the first, to come and see and take these good tidings to the city. In that revelation I shared in that 2020, I told you people that God told me that I also call women in a special way. It means women are not exempted in ministering the word of God. But where the bone of contention is, is whether women should preach in the church Women should help a church. Women should be given title like reverend, bishop, pastor, and so on. That is where the bone of contention is. What the Lord showed me in this revelation was that I also call women in a special way to preach the gospel of Christ. It's like you're seeing me here. God has been sending me to different places to preach. And I have been going to where the Lord has been leading me. I don't go by myself. This is to further confirm to you that God indeed has called women into the ministry of evangelism. Is it allowed for women to stand in the church and preach? My answer is yes. Women should be allowed to preach in a church, but women should not be a leader of a church. I repeat, women should be allowed to preach in the church, should be allowed to, you know, uh, lead 
lead other women, the youth. Women can take care of the women's section. Women can share revelation. Women can share their testimony. Women can preach. If you are a woman and God have given you the mandate to open a church or to run a church, you are free. But your husband must be the leader of that church. You are a woman. God gave you the vision. You are the visioneer that God gave you the mandate to open a church in his name. God only used you, that woman, as a channel because he is the God of every soul here on earth. He can use whoever he wants at a given time that he wants. And if you are a woman, you are running a church, you do not have a husband, I would advise that you pray for God to bless you with a life partner that both of you can run the ministry together because marriage, it is honorable in the sight of God. That is why he says the man must leave the parents, cleave to the wife, and both of them shall become one and not two anymore. Because God wants a woman to marry or a man to marry, that is why he said in Ecclesiastes 4 verse number 9 that two are better than one. So if you have a church, if God give you a, a vision to open a church and you are convinced and you open a church, do not be the leader of that church. Your husband can be the leader. Where you don't have a husband, pray to God. The Lord definitely will lead you to whoever that will be the leader of that church, not you, the woman. Though the church knows that you are the one that started the church, that God used you to build the church, your respect will be given to you. Nobody disrespects you, okay? Everything needs wisdom. I want to share the revelation that I received that inspired me to talk on this message today. One night, I don't know if it's a sister or a brother that had that revelation, that for the past seven years, she's been running a church in the name of the Lord. And she's been succeeding. Her husband had died. Then, she stumbled on a message in the internet saying that women preachers are tormented in hell, that women are not supposed to preach. So when she told me this, I was also grieved in my spirit. I didn't know what to say. I told her, well, God is saying, God has heard. Let him reveal to her or whoever. Or if God wants to reveal to me, let his will be done. The second day, I did not have any revelation. Though I went to bed that night, I was sad as well. I said, God, what is happening? That if somebody preach the gospel, will die and go to hell? Or if somebody be a pastor, will die and go to hell? God, you have been talking to me concerning preaching the gospel. And I have been preaching the gospel. So I went to bed that night. I talked to God. I was not happy as well. I went sad. I did not see any revelation. The next day I woke up. I did not see any revelation concerning it. So I was not even thinking about this message. I wasn't even talking about it, neither thinking about it. It was the second day or the third night at about 10 to 11 p.m. like that. Then suddenly in a trance, I saw myself appear in a church. And in this church, I was standing facing large congregation. People were many in the church and they were all seated down comfortably. And I was standing behind the pulpit. It's like I wanted to start preaching in that church. A little while, I had a voice like this. Leave this, leave this place you're standing. Stand in front of the pulpit and speak to the people. Go away from where you are standing. Stand in front of the pulpit. I said, hey, at once. I said, no, ah, ah, please don't. I don't want trouble. Let me not stand behind the pulpit 
and talk to these people. Women are not supposed to stand like this and teach in the church. And I saw myself quickly. I left the pulpit and I stood in front of the congregation, not behind the pulpit anymore. But this time I was standing in front of the pulpit and I started talking from there. And that was how the vision ended. Immediately I woke up from that revelation. The first thought that came to my mind, which I believe it is the answer to that question that that woman, Reverend Joy, asked me. This was the message. God had clarified me that women are not supposed to lead in the church. Women are not supposed to stand behind the pulpit. Women, listen to me. Women, listen to me. I'm also a woman. If you watch the the, the uh, outreach, we went to Gembu. In that apostolic church, the man of God invited me that I should stand behind the pulpit where he usually stands to preach the gospel. And I told him, no, I will not stand behind the pulpit. Let me just stand in front of the church. And that was exactly what I did. I ended up standing in front of the church. I deliver my message and I walk away based on that revelation that I saw. So please, like I said, women, you can open a church, but you cannot be a leader of the church. Women, you can preach in the church, but be careful not to stand behind the pulpits. A woman is a woman. Woman, you can do more of evangelism. You hear what I'm saying? You can do more of evangelism. The women can evangelize. You can preach on the street like I'm doing. You can see the way I go, see the way God is, 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 is converting sinners to himself. Each of the outreach I go, God keep on proving himself. I'm so happy. I'm so happy. I feel like, God, give me strength. Let me be doing this evangelism every day, every day, every day. But the body needs to rest sometime. And I need money at times. I need money. Because money is involved. For me to travel here, I need money to fuel the car. I need money to buy other things I need. I need money for our hotel where we are going to lodge. I need money to do one or two things. It's not easy. But women do more of evangelism than running a church. If the Lord have asked you to set up a prayer uh, group, not prayer house, do as the Lord instructed you. It is okay. You should have a section where people come and gather. You pray. Maybe fix a particular day where you pray for cases. You pray for people, but it should not be called prayer house. It should not be called a church. And if God is telling you, open a church, like I say, make sure a man is the head of that church. Do everything with wisdom. Ask God to direct you. May the Lord help us in Jesus' name.